Welcome to Daily Living with Father Chapin, where we consider God's Word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Yes, my friend, that is what we do. Sometimes the Bible can be a bit confusing, so we bust it down like a fraction. We're asking questions along the way. Questions like, what do these Gospels have to do with me? That's what I want to know. How can I take these Gospels? and apply them into my daily living so that I can become a reflection of God's love to a world, let's face it, don't know God for sure and definitely is in deep need of more love, don't you think? I may mean, take a look around. There's a lot of bad news bears out there. How can I take the good news of Jesus Christ and apply it into my daily living so that I can become a reflection of that love? I can become a light in the darkness. I can become a tool in His hand making present his kingdom, not someday, but today and every day. And that's what this show is all about. So glad you could join us. Oh, we got a good one. But before we get into our show today, it is time for viewer mail. Our first letter and our only letter today coming from Julianne. She's up in Maine. Dear Father C, how I love your newsletter. Yes, my friend, if you choose to support the ministry, you will receive a monthly newsletter, which just catches you up on what's going on around here. I look forward to reading it the way I used to enjoy reading the Sunday paper when we had one. Stormy has certainly wound her way around your heart. I suppose so. You two are hilarious together. Can't live without her or can't live with her. Or you can't live without her, right? Well, well, I haven't tried the without her quite yet, but we'll, we'll see. Um, so many little things give me great pleasure. And your stories are one of them. And hey, you rock in that do-rag. Of course, she's talking about the UV sunblock treated head skull cap that I was wearing at the beach, which has left a pronounced red sunburn line right there that this makeup is desperately trying to hide but not working so well. Speaking of Sundays, the memorable masses, mama's homemade jelly donuts, penny candy, amazing food, beach all day. Now I look forward to daily living and putting my best efforts each week into your thoughtful gospel. I love the program. And let others know about it all the time. It's just great. Thank you again for all your effort. Enjoy your vacation. Well, I did. Every meal, every conversation, every bird, every wave, fishing boat you might see, every sunrise you might miss, ice cream you shouldn't have, and homemade jelly donuts if you find them. God bless Julianne. Well, what a letter, Julianne. Thank you so much for, for writing in, and thank you so much for watching. What do you say we get into our gospel today? God's got a message for you. Are you ready to hear it? Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The gospel of the Lord. And what a gospel it is. This is Daily Living on Father Chapin. You stick around. We're going to talk about this gospel and a few other things here as we consider God's Word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Hi, this is Father Chapin, host of Daily Living with Father Chapin. It is such a pleasure to be able to come into your home each and every week and share the good news, but it's a bit expensive. So I would ask you to consider grabbing a piece of paper and a pencil and at the next break, I'm going to share with you some details how you can become a partner with Daily Living. And together, we can take the good news to a lost world. What do you say we get back to the show? 
Welcome back to Daily Living. Today we continue our journey through the Gospel of Mark, a gospel that is considered by most scripture scholars to be the first one written. And the principal source for the Gospel of Mark, where he got his information, is thought to be Peter, estimated to be written about 20 years after the Christ event. Mark, very much like the Gospel of John, begins his gospel emphatically stating who Jesus was, and of course continues to be, as he wrote, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So he begins with the conclusion, which you would think he might want to work up to, maybe build a case for it, but no, he just goes for it. Beginning with the conclusion, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, period, deal with it. Now, if you were with us last week, we were talking about how Jesus had returned to his hometown and how it had not gone well. In fact, he was rejected outright. Isn't he the carpenter, the son of Mary? Consequently, Jesus walked away from that stone of ground and was not able to perform any miracles. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. So our gospel today picks up immediately after this rejection as Jesus gathers his disciples together to send them out on a mission. Which, when you think about it, is a bit odd. You would think that Jesus might want to wait for a high note to launch his evangelization efforts. Maybe some momentum that he could build on, but no, as often happens in the Gospels, we get the opposite of what we might expect. Consider, for example, the circumstances of his birth. Talking about Jesus, I mean, think about it. If you truly consider the circumstances of how God the Father, the creator of the universe, and all that it is in the universe, all that is in the universe, including you, God the Father decides to put his finger into the middle of human history with Jesus being born in a manger, amongst sheep dung and filth, not in a castle, not in a crib lined in silk, no, 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 raised by a common carpenter, which doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense, certainly not the way I would have done it. But as I've noted a time or two in the past, I've been to seminary and I learned two things. There is a God and it is not me. Now, understanding that his ways are higher than our ways, but like I said, our gospel today picks up in the wake of what must have been an incredibly humiliating experience as he was rejected by his own hometown. So now he turns to his own disciples and he says, go, it is time for mission. Now, of course, this mission has been in full swing for some time, starting way back with a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight his path. So, yes, I'm talking about John the Baptist, a man on a mission, a man with a message. And it was a simple message, a powerful message, a message that, dare I say, is as true in this moment right here, right now, as it was the day it was first proclaimed. The kingdom of God is upon you, right here, right now. Repent and believe in the gospel. This was the message, and this was the mission of John the Baptist, to carry this message. So when Jesus shows up, what does he do? Does he build a church and offer coffee and donuts? No, he does not. Does he go down to Jerusalem to take over the ritual of temple worship? No, he does not. He picks up this same message of John the Baptist and without changing even a little bit of it, travels from town to town spreading that message, which is precisely what we are called to do today. The mission has not changed. It remains today as it always has been. And, and how it comes about is pretty much the same as it was in the very beginning, before the Gospels were even written. 
The message was carried word of mouth by individuals from town to town. Of course, Paul comes to mind, but he wasn't the only one. There were many others whom the Bible does not record, and they carried the message to where the people were. Sadly, over the centuries, all that has seemed to have changed. Today, it's much more like, well, you know, why don't you come to our church, you know, if even that. Of course, we've got all kinds of flavors. We've got all kinds of activities. Meanwhile, the idea of going out and carrying the message, well, that's the priest's job or the preacher or the missionary. And while we might put a couple of dollars into the plate to support the ministry, as far as us actually carrying the message ourselves, well... Not so much. You know how it goes. Religion and politics tend to stay away from those. Consequently, so many of us have become secret Christians, which is very sad. Because hear me when I say there is no such thing as secret Christianity. Never let us forget that Jesus made it very clear that if we deny him on earth, he will deny us before our Heavenly Father. But getting back to our gospel today, Jesus is sending out these, these people. Who, who are these people? Well, let's start with who they're not. Uh, first of all, they're certainly not the guys that I would have picked. They were not the brightest students in seminary. In fact, they didn't go to seminary. In fact, I doubt any of them even really went to church. I mean, they were certainly not well-crafted orators. They were not men of influence. These were simple working men, uneducated men, untrained men, fishermen, tax collectors, not the upper echelons of high society, not the movers and shakers, but rather the low end of the social economic scale. And up to this point, let's face it, they certainly have not proven themselves as pillars of faith. Consider the storm at sea. I mean, they were convinced that they were going to die. They woke Jesus up in a panic. And after he calmed the storm, he looked around and he, and he said, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And the short answer to that question is no. These were weak and sinful men, yet these are the guys that he picks to send out on mission. Why? Well, if there's anything I've come to learn about Jesus is that he never does or says anything without a specific purpose. And I believe the purpose here for calling obviously underqualified, weak and sinful people to carry his message is so that you and I would have no excuse. Jesus summoned the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. So he gives them authority, gives them power over unclean spirits. Now, when I think of authority, when I think of power, I think of government. We live under the authority and power of government. And I'm not complaining, because if we didn't have government, we would live in total chaos. So these governments rule with authority, they rule with power, and this authority is backed up by military, just in case. Now, if you go to New York City, there's a huge building downtown known as the United Nations. Formed in 1945, this is where all the countries in the world come together and meet, and they're represented by an ambassador. And of course, this ambassador represents the interests of their country. In other words, they're not pushing their own agenda, at least not in theory. So they're sent out to advance the interests of their own country. Now, I say all of that to say this. This is what we have going on today. Jesus is sending out his own disciples by his own authority, to represent his own interests. Which, by the way, is to carry the message, which, in case you forgot, is the kingdom of God is upon you right here, right now. Repent and believe in the gospel. In other words, change your ways. This is the message that Jesus is sending his disciples out to carry. And he's not sending them out on their own authority. No, no, he is giving them power. He is giving them authority. He's sending them out 
with his own power to fight the war. Because as we have noted a time or two in the past, we as Christians need to understand that we are in a perpetual state of war. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but with principalities, with powers, world rulers of this present darkness, and with evil spirits in the heavens. In other words, we are in a spiritual battle. It is raging all around us. Whether you want to believe that or not, it is. So today we have Jesus giving his disciples, which by the way, through extension is you and I, the power over these spirits. But our enemy is formidable. He is crafty. And he remains hidden. Because the greatest deception Satan ever pulled off in his world is to convince us that he doesn't exist. Thus deceiving us into believing that there is no war. It's life and life only. And how are you going to win a war that you don't first recognize that you're in? This is Daily Living on Father Chapin. You stick around. We'll be right back. And we will continue to talk about this gospel here as we consider God's word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Hi, this is Father Chapin, host of Daily Living. If you feel like you're being fed by this ministry, I would ask you to prayerfully consider a partnership with Daily Living and what we're trying to do here. A monthly gift of any amount that you feel comfortable with, and I will send you a monthly newsletter, and if you provide an email address, a script of the show prior to its broadcast. Just write a check to Daily Living, P.O. Box 339, Nitro, West Virginia, 25143. You can also go on the website at mydailyliving.com and give through PayPal, and together we can shine the light of the good news in a whole lot of dark places. What do you say we get back to the show? Welcome back to Daily Living. So today we have a gospel where Jesus is sending out his disciples, two by two, to fight a war. And how are they to fight the war? To carry the message. Which once again is the kingdom of God is upon you right here, right now. Repent and believe in the gospel. So as he is sending his disciples out, he is setting goals parameters for the mission and it all seems to start with a packing list and not so much what they can take but rather what they should not take he instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick no food no sack no money in their belts they were however to wear sandals but not a second tunic really i mean can you imagine? These guys are going out into the world to fight a war, and they're being told to take nothing with them. Not even any money. Which, i got to be honest, I don't go anywhere without at least a little pocket change, just in case. But to a war? Of course, when I think about war, I think about World War II, I think of D-Day with over 150,000 men storming the beaches of Normandy, France. And these men were loaded down with heavy packs, equipment that the army had deemed necessary to accomplish the mission. Sadly for some, this had disastrous consequences. Stories are told of how as the boats were coming ashore under this hail of gunfire, some of those driving these landing crafts got a little nervous and dropped the gates far too early in waters that were far too deep. Consequently, many soldiers rushed out of the boats and drowned under the weight of all the provisions, provisions in which they had put their trust. Today, Jesus is sending out his disciples to fight another kind of war, and he's telling them, take nothing. Why? Well, I'm thinking the reason that he does not want them to take anything with them is that he does not want them or us to operate on our own power. He, do, he does not want us to trust in our own provisions. He does not want us to make up our own contingency plans. 
but rather, but, but rather, but rather we are to trust completely and wholly on him. And yes, my friend, welcome. We have finally reached the larger point of our gospel today. You know how we always go on and on about the deeper meanings of scripture and how we might apply this to our daily living. Well, this is it. I know you believe in Jesus, my friend. You would not be watching this program if you didn't believe in Jesus. But do you trust him? That's the fundamental point. Because you see, we are charged to carry the message to the world. The kingdom of God is upon you right here, right now. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is our charge. okay? But we are not called to do this on our own power. But rather his power. And should this message be rejected, as often it is, we are not asked to join the great debating society. No, no, no. We are not asked to fight. According to this gospel, we, when we are faced with this kind of rejection, are told to leave, to shake the dust off our feet, which in the Middle East was and remains today a real insult. Because, you know, they got a thing about feet over there. The point is this. We are not called to argue somebody into the faith. Not that anybody could in the first place. But that's okay. Because that's not our job. We are called simply to carry the message. That's it. And what kind of soil receives this message, and whether it might grow or not, does not involve us. Consider John 3.18. Of course, we all know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. But do we know what it says just a few verses later? John 3, 18. It says, whoever believes in him will not be condemned. But whoever does not believe in him is already condemned because they have not believed in the name of the only son of God. That's what it says. If they reject Jesus, they are condemned, meaning they are judged. And of course, world don't want to hear that. No, no, no. World don't want to hear. World wants to hear that all roads lead to the same God. That's what they want to hear. Because that sounds a whole lot more inclusive and loving, which is what we think God should be. But once again, as much as we might want to make this about us, it's not. It's about him. And we are called to carry his message, which, in case you forgot, is the kingdom of God is upon you right here, right now. Repent and believe in the gospel. And when we do, when we present that message, we will be met by one of three reactions. Number one, outright rejection. I mean, don't even go there. My guilt is secret and it's going to stay that way. I don't want to hear it. That is stony ground. The second reaction is anger. As they bow up and say, well, what about you? <laughs> As if somehow the sanctity of the one delivering the message affects the legitimacy of that message. Neither of these two reactions are rich soil. They're not going to receive the message because they don't feel that they're in need of a savior. They will tell you that they're quite content with where they are. They're quite comfortable with any God you might come up with as long as not a God of judgment. Because, well, they don't want to hear about judgment because judgment forces accountability. But there is a third type of person out there. One who is suffering in this life. One who is struggling with the existential dilemma. Questions like, who am I? Why am I here? Where did God go? As they grapple with fear or grief or guilt, and when they hear the good news, when it lands in that soil, it pricks their heart, causes change as they yearn for a Savior because they know they need someone or something that can save them from themselves and make some sense out of this life, which, of course, Jesus does. He actually does two things. Number one, 
Jesus opens the gates of heaven and a possible relationship with the Father through his Holy Spirit. Not someday when we die, but today, right here, right now. And secondly, he gives us the power to fight the battle that is raging all around us in this fallen world. A war that even to the most casual observer seems to be, well, we seem to be losing. But nevertheless, we are called to engage in the battle. We are called to be his warriors. We are called to be his ambassadors. We have been given his power. We are qualified. Let us join the battle today. And my friends, let us always remember that the outcome of this battle is not our responsibility. We're just throwing seed. We're just the messengers. And what's the message? My friend, I can see that you're suffering. And I know how that feels. I've been there. But let me tell you about a man named Jesus. And let me tell you what he did for me. Because you see, the kingdom of God is upon you. Right here, right now. Repent and believe in the gospel. You know, every day in this country, somebody does something nice for somebody else. Today, why don't you let that somebody be you? Because the best vitamin for a Christian is B1. This is Daily Living. I'm Father Chapin. Hope you can come back next week and we'll do it again. Until then, I hope you let God live in your life. And I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.